What's going down this down in Houston? I want to tell you about Rodney Jones Lock Group. I was recently involved in a car accident while I was taking an Uber. So I called a few attorneys and all of them kept giving me a runaround. That was until a friend suggested I call Rodney Jones. I came into the office and explained what happened. And not long after, I was back in his office. Rodney worked fast and I got paid. Work-related injuries, car accidents, slip and falls. Call Rodney Jones, he does it all. Don't fall for attorneys with all the gimmicks. Call the attorney who means business. going down this Donnie Houston podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a very special guest today. Uh, listen, man, she has been putting it down since a kid, literally. You know what I mean? Um, she's out here doing her thing. She got new music. You've heard her on the uh, Sensei with Big Pokey. You know what I mean? You probably first heard her on Bar Baby with Big Mo. And uh, hey, man, it's none other than Ronetta Spencer. What's going down? Hey, nothing much. How are you? I'm chilling. How you feeling? Um, I'm feeling good. You know, I can't complain. It ain't gonna do nothing anyway. So. I hear that. I hear that. So what's new? What's good? Man, uh, everything. I got a new project that I'm working on. I'm super excited about that because it's been 10 years since my last album. That's a long stretch and a long gap. So, yeah, we've just been working really hard on trying to get that out and making sure that it's what the fans want because that's the most important part at the end of the day anyway. So it's your first project in 10 years. Why so long? Ten years. I'm going to say I kind of feel like I lost myself as an artist in between that time. Um, things that I was recording just didn't, didn't feel like or sound like me. I kind of felt like I lost my creativity. And not only that, with modeling, I really didn't have time. So it was kind of like picking one or the other. And since I felt like I... I lost my creativity. I was like, well, screw it. Let's just go on the model train for a little bit and see how that goes. So, okay, modeling. Okay, I see I ain't know about this. Yeah. So how early <laughs> did you get into modeling? Um, it had to be my junior year. Um, just kind of helping out a friend at college. Um, she needed somebody to model and she knew about me so I walked in her fashion show and I didn't know that there were agencies there at the time. And overnight, I just kind of got pushed into it and I, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. Not only did I get to keep the clothes, but you know, um, the exposure and modeling is, is really fast paced. So junior year, this is high school. So what high school did you go to? I went to North Shore. North Shore. So yeah. you, was on, you was born on, you was on the North Side? Yeah, I was on the North Side. Transferred from Doby my first semester of my freshman year and graduated from North Shore. From North Shore, okay. So did you go to college or anything like that or not? So I decided that I wanted to um, pursue hair. So cosmetology it was. And later on, you know, I got my associates in child development. So that's kind of like my backup plan, but ultimately it's music, beauty, fashion, and hair for me. Music, beauty, fashion, okay, okay. So even then, like I was saying, you know, how do you end up on Bar Baby? I just happened to be my daddy's shadow that night. That was a complete accident. So first of all, <laughs> Ronnie Spencer, if you ain't figured it out, her dad is the legend, Ronnie Spencer. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you happen to be with your dad? Yeah, I happen to be my dad. They were actually um, going to use a sample or try out a sample or make a sample. And I was in there just singing it and no D put her on it. Let's see how it sounds. I couldn't even reach the mic. So they had me sitting on top of phone books to reach the mic. And my dad laid down a dummy track for me to kind of figure out how they wanted it. And in my mind, I was like, look, this is my shot to let my daddy know this is what I want to be. Let's get it. Bye, baby. <laughs> to the top <laughs> of my lungs. You <laughs> <laughs> to the top of my lungs. That's funny. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So how old are you at this time, though? I was six when I recorded it. When they dropped it, I was turning seven. Six years old? Yeah, I was six years old. So how early How early do you remember like going to the studio with your dad? 
my very first song that I ever recorded with him, I was four. Oh, and sure. um, I recorded at Skip Holman's house. And it's called Ronetta. My dad made a song about me. And I was only supposed to he be had in the you intro. In that, Man, he put you, he put some la da dots. <laughs> I can't I can't hit the la da da to save my life. No I've shit. tried. I can't do it. Like I can't mimic my old man f- for nothing. I have tried. <laughs> it is hard. But yeah, I was four. Um I was supposed to only be in the intro, saying a couple of words, and he ended up making me sing and Fell in love with the mic from there. Bar Baby made me love it even more. That's what's up. So, so after Bar Baby, did you did you like? It was that kind of the thing where they were like, "Okay, we're gonna make this a serious thing." And you start working on music then, or was it was like a one off? Like you just did it and went on with life. I thought it was gonna be like a one time thing. Um, I ended up doing Bar Baby remix mm-hmm. with Big Mo, mm-hmm. and then okay, how was it? How was it? Did you record with him? So Mo was actually in the studio both times while I recorded, saying if he liked it or if he didn't. Um, They kind of made me switch up the flavor on the remix because they had me rapping on it. And shout out to Cliche, because that is actually who taught me how to rap, was Hmm. Cliche. And she actually wrote that rap, too. That's what's up. Shout out to Cliche. That's what's up. it was, yeah, they had me out my comfort zone, because I told Daddy, I can't rap. I can't do what I see everybody else do. That's difficult. But... Cliche came in like a drill sergeant, and I got it overnight. <laughs> hmm. That's what's up. So, okay. When does it, the modeling thing is 11th grade? So, this, so the, are you ever like, okay, I'm going to do a model thing? Like, that's what I want to do is model? So, I currently still model now. I'm a oh, free still agent. Doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm a free agent. Um, I was signed with Sanaj Model Management, which is um, Cardinal Jones. He's a Houston native. He's responsible for Houston Fashion Beyond the Limits fashion shows here in Houston. So he deals with a lot of like celebrity hosts, celebrity clients and things like that. And he actually put me on my first big fashion show where I couldn't just walk on the runway and count the heads because it was too many for me to do that. But um, modeling, is, it's gonna be there. It's not gonna go nowhere. I just like to keep them separated because the moment I squish them together, it's going to get hectic. So hmm. it's easier with them separated. So is music more so, if you had to choose one? It... Music, hands down, music. Hmm. Like now, finding myself, finding my creativity, being able to be as creative as I am, my team, is hands down music. When you say finding yourself, what, 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 is, what would you say like now, okay, this is Ronetta Spencer now? Man, back then, I didn't know if I wanted to be a rock star, a pop star, R&B. I didn't know if I wanted to be a La Kim. I didn't, I didn't know. I just was dipping and dabbing in each genre, trying to find my place. R&B, hip-hop has been my place this whole time. So I'm trying to, like, looking back, like, girl, what was you thinking about? You wasted <laughs> so much time. But that's cool. You got it out the way, though. Yeah. Because some people try to experiment later on, and it's like, ah, oh, man, here they go. Man, look. If you are starting early, experiment early, because that 10 years was a long 10 years. If I wouldn't have had modeling, I probably still would have been just dipping and dabbing in genres to see. I even went into opera hmm. to see if that was what I wanted to do. And it, like I said, it was R&B. You just came back. It was R&B the whole time. That's what's up. So now you got the, the new album. Who you working on the album? Pud Empire, Big Pup. Shout out to him. Hmm. Um... Working with him is, I'm going to say, like, freedom almost. He gives me creative control. Whatever vision I see, he right there to back it up. Just working with him is easy. Like, I didn't have to go in and and struggle to write or I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to sing. I don't know if I want to rap. He basically told me to compile everything that I've learned and everything that I went through with trying to find myself into this album and it worked perfectly we got opera where i did my own samples in it hmm. um we got rapping in there went a little gangster with it and we also got the r&b side in there where i could just sing you to sleep if i need to so he was he was like a real big help in this project hmm. definitely what um any producers or anybody did you write every, you wrote everything yourself so I wrote majority of the album. I did have some writers come in. Um, my husband actually 
helped write some things and it's actually featured on the album as well i had d1 the chosen help write a song called outro um producers we worked with og bowser of course i had to get harvey love like that's my fairy god producer um we did some more work with um gosh what is his name I forgot the baby's name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we did some more work with um, R&R Entertainment, of course. My dad came in and, you know, he had to sprinkle his salt and pepper on there because couldn't have put an album out without mm. him either. So I needed some of that Ronnie Spencer sauce and direction. And, of course, if I call him, it's already all work, no games. How was that working with your dad in the studio? Is he straight business? Like, even though you're his daughter, he coming in there and it's straight business. I feel like I don't get no slack. Like, when my dad's in the studio, it's game face. I almost feel like I gotta call him Mr. Ronnie or Mr. Spencer. Like, he don't play games. And I'm so thankful for that, but mm. <laughs> he don't play. When we go in the studio, it's strictly going here, record. We're here to work. Show your, show your best, do your best, and let's go ahead and get this, this done. It's always been like that, from a kid on up to now. I heard you. I was seeing something. I heard you say something. Uh, you were referring to DJ Screw as like Uncle Screw. Like talk yeah, about Uncle Screw. Talk about like just growing up with your dad being Ronnie Spencer and who he is. You know what I mean? Like how was that whole thing? Um, it was normal. I grew well, up normal to you, I would imagine. Yeah, but what's something that stands out from like? Because you say like Uncle Screw and like kind of being around like that whole those whole guys who at those times was regular people to regular you, but they're people, actually yeah. legends. Yeah. You legends. Know? Yeah. So, Uncle Screw actually played a big part in our family. He's also my cousin's um, godfather. Hmm. So, we saw him a lot. Um, him and Nikki. We, like, a weeks wouldn't go by. We saw them almost every day for one point in, in life. So, we would go over to his house. Um, I like to tell people, I used to go over to his house with jugs, like water jugs. And... He didn't like changing his pocket, so he just throw it on his floor. Like if anybody went to Uncle Screw House, it was pennies, dimes, quarters, nickels all over the floor. Take my jugs and why daddy and him in there trying to figure out some new music. I just go through the house and pick up all of them, put them in my jugs. And when we got ready to leave, Uncle Screw, thank you. you go put in your piggy bank. So, I mean, he, he's just been, he's an uncle. He's my Uncle Screw. Mm. Definitely. That's what's up. And then, um, did you ever see ESG back then? Because one of my favorite songs that's so South Side that y'all so did, so I didn't play that so much. So, so. E like an uncle. He pushes me too. Um, not so much as a kid because he was super busy, but as an adult and being in the studio with him, it's always advice. It's always, you got this. You gonna be somebody great. Keep working at it. Well, if he don't like something, ESG is one of the people who put me, I don't like that. Mm. Like the way that sound, I don't like that. You can, you can do that different. Go sauce it up some more. So I love being in the studio with him because he, he not going to sugarcoat nothing. Yeah. None of them sugarcoat anything by a long shot. They are very straightforward. But <laughs> he just got that, that uncle feeling. He just tell you and your feelings ain't going to get hurt because it's like, okay, you looking out for me. Yeah. Uh, I got that. I rock with that. Yeah, that's what's up. I mean, you, you kind of like becoming... You know, more so like, uh, like you know, one of them hook people. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you, you know, you gonna hit them right there to Spencer hooks now, man. Like, if you had to say because you've been able to work with Big Mo, your dad is Ronnie Spencer. Who would you say top five H Town hook people all time, dead or alive? I'm gonna have to say my uncle Billy, Billy Cook. Billy Cook. Yeah. Okay, you got to rank them too. Top five. Ooh, top five. Okay, so my Uncle Billy going to be number five, for sure, for sure. Um, number two. Mm, number two, I'm going to have to get that one to. Oh, dang, Donnie, you got me on the spot spot now. I just want to say I love all y'all out there, okay? Number five going to have to be my Uncle Billy. Number two gonna have to be cliche. No, I'm sorry. Number four gonna have to be cliche. Number three, I don't know. ESG sometimes be having some killer hooks, but dang, number three. That, can I incorporate myself in here? Dang, I'm gonna 
gonna have to say, Tiny, why you do me like this? You did me dirty. Number three, I'm gonna have to say the homie Big Mo, for sure, for sure. Number four, I'm gonna have to say me, and number one, I'm gonna have to say my daddy, cause if not, I'm gonna I'm feel it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my order right there. Fair enough. Dang, Donnie, you, you did me wrong. I mean, I'm just, you left some people out, but you it's cool. I love y'all, by the way, okay? <laughs> nah, it's cool. You only get five slots. It's all good. Yeah, I love y'all. Yeah. Talk about um, talk about doing Sensei with Big Pokey. I was starstruck. No shit. Sure. And nervous. I was nervous as yeah, hell. Never, you I'm never still. met Pokey before? I have. That's the sad part about it. But Pokey is like one of my all-time favorite rappers. Like, I clean my house to his music, drive no road shit. trips to his music. So, that was one of the only screwed up click members that I really didn't get a chance to do anything with. When I got the call, I remember I was hanging up the phone. I looked at my husband. I was like, you ain't going to believe this, man. I got to be in the studio with Pokey. I got in the studio. I had gave myself a prep talk on the way there. Got in there and was just nervous. Can't even tell you why. I was just nervous. And he wasn't even at the studio. But... Sid was there, Bruce was there, so they were walking me through it. Got in there, sang that one word. I sang that one word with all my might, <laughs> different notes. I was like, I got this. And I come out the booth and Pokey's sitting right there. Must have lost it. I started acting like a true, true fan. I need a picture, please. Can I have a picture? Can y'all stop getting my picture? Can y'all get my video? So yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Pokey fan. No shit. That was like the best experience. That's crazy. That's that's dope as hell. You finally got to work with him too. Finally got to work with him. Okay, so then I gotta ask you this: thing. Is Pokey your favorite Houston rapper? Pokey is my favorite Houston rapper. It's just something about his style, his deliverance. I I I rock with it. Like what's your what's your favorite I'm Pokey gonna, album? I'm gonna tell you this. I give you one even better. Keep my name out your mouth. If hmm. you know about me, I'm sensei. I'm uncut and I'm off the chain. Like I rock with that. Podina. That that's that's my all time favorite artist. Besides him and Kiki. Pokey and Kiki. Yeah. Pokey and Kiki. That's what's up. Have you done some stuff with Kiki? I've been on Kiki, all three of Kiki's self-made albums. Yeah. The first one was a complete accident. I kind of stole the song from my dad. It was supposed to be my dad on the song. And my dad had actually lost his voice in the studio, so I was going in to let a dummy track, and they ended up keeping the dummy track. So I was like, oh, snap. I done stole the song from daddy and got on the song with Kiki. Mm. Like, my bad, but not my bad. And then from there, he just would contact me and say hey I need a hook from you or I'm about to do another album can you hop on the album so yeah it's it's fun working with Kiki that's what's up what um if you had to have it your way what would you say like this is the type of career I'm, I'm good with having like if I got had to get out the game this is the type of career I want to have believe it or not I want to be a state trooper no shit. Um, I was actually. I was asking about music, and you started talking about being a lost. What's yeah, going? Yeah, I was actually <laughs> going to be a state trooper. That was gonna be my my backup plan for if music just wasn't it. No shit. It's gonna be state trooper. But now, okay, so in your music career, what would you say? Like, okay, I would like to do this, so I would like to accomplish this, so these are the type of things. So I got a few accomplishments now. Okay. okay. I need to be on the Grammys. Okay. You want you want a Grammy or you want to perform on the I Grammys? I want to perform, and I need I need to get at least one or two. So I can put them on my wall. Um, another big accomplishment that I would really, really love uh, as a child watching BET. I always wanted to perform at the BET Awards. Mm. But now I kind of got it set in my heart. I want to do BET and the Hip Hop Awards. Um, MTV Awards, of course. I would love to have that on my wall. And every artist wants multiple platinum plaques. And at least I need at least a diamond one. So I got a lot of work to do. Hmm. I'm what's trying your, to reach the world. What's what's some of your dream collaborations? Queen B for one. Like I'm a Beyonce, Beyonce fan. I need I need to. Okay, it's, it's gotta be. I'm a manifest it. Hmm. <laughs> um, definitely Beyonce. I'm a big Megan Thee Stallion fan. Not just because she's from Houston, but I I really love her work ethics and 
like how she just didn't stop until she got what she what she wanted and where she wanted to be. And um, I always wanted to do a song with Patti LaBelle. Mm. That's a wild card, but that ain't that's yeah. You talking some shit now? Yeah, I always wanted to do a song with Patti. Uh-huh. What's your favorite Patti LaBelle song? It only um, come on now. Come on now. How much I do. I do need you. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely got to do a song with Patty. I grew up listening to her. That was my grandmother's favorite artist. That and Angela Wimbush. Angela Wimbush. Man. And my dad got to meet Angela Wimbush as a kid. He did a song with Ronald Isley. And he got to actually meet her. Hmm. So, yeah. I definitely got to do a song with Patty or Angela or both of them. That's what's up. We gonna speak that. We gonna put that into the universe. You know what I mean? Throw it up there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Already. So, the album is gonna come out when? We are shooting for the album to come out in the fall or either the winter because the song is. I'm on some grown and sexy stuff on this album. Um, I got married, so I kind of just wanted to bring my fans into my world, basically, just like. You know, some relationship stuff, and I just wanted to make some feel good music. Hmm. So we're we're shooting for the cuddling season. Wait until you look cool outside. Yeah, wait yeah. until you get cool up, pop me in on the deck, and let y'all handle y'all's grown folk business. <laughs> <laughs> this was, and what's the name of the album? We haven't even came up with an album, uh, album name. We've been debating it. Hmm. We've been uh, we were going with statistics at first. We went from statistics to um, the Goddess Volume One. I need a name that's gonna stick, so it's just up in the air for now until we can figure out this name, and it's got to be a good name. That's what's up. So I already. Working. That's what's up. Well, you want to give out your social media and everything before we get about it? Definitely. Y'all can follow me on Instagram, Ronetta underscore. That's R O N N E T T A underscore. The same thing for Twitter. And on Facebook, Ronetta Denise Spencer. And that's my fan page, too. That's what it is. And I follow back. I promise I do. That's what's up. Well, you got anything else before we get about it? Uh, no. Thank you for having me. I'm actually a fan of you, too. So. I appreciate you coming through. Yeah, we got to do some music or something. Yeah, you know definitely. I mean? Definitely. For sure. You are sick as a producer, so. I'm all right. No, you got that sauce. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thank that's you what's for up with Hey Man. Me. It's Donnie Houston Podcast, Renetta Spencer. Hey, man, we out. Donnie Houston.